Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm the painter of this video. Today I want to share with you some best practices that many professional portrait painters uh, use and uh, give some advice on uh, both uh, the material of uh, painting, in this case it's uh, oil and uh, egg tempera, and uh, try to, to give you some idea of uh, how you can improve your portrait painting, whatever uh, medium you use. So, as I'm doing this, you will see me painting the portrait of this uh, girl uh, crying. And uh, for this, uh, uh, I'm using uh, a board that is prepared with uh, rabbit skin glue gesso because I wanted to paint these first layers with uh, egg tempera. Now, what uh, I have done is that I have drawn on paper, I've done some drawings on her uh, portrait, her face, with a pencil. This way I have a good idea of uh, the portrait that I am about to paint. And uh, I have uh, painted, I have drawn a very simple drawing of her features on uh, a piece of paper. I smeared uh, powder pigment on the back of that paper and then transferred that uh, drawing on uh, my panel. Now that panel, um, before doing that, uh, I painted a layer of uh, a mid-tone color, a grayish, uh, a warm grayish color uh, that you see it here uh, um, being uh, through her uh, features. Uh, and uh, on that uh, egg tempera color, layer of color, I transferred my drawing. Now, after transferring my drawing, with uh, again using uh, egg tempera, you can use acrylic or uh, any other water-based uh, medium, I have uh, painted with a small brush the facial features and uh, uh, a rough sketch of uh, her uh, hair. So, after that, uh, I continued by painting my background again in uh, egg tempera. And uh, this way, I, I will uh, paint this portrait. This will allow me these first layers of uh, uh, oil-based medium, like, uh, like uh, egg tempera, will allow me to uh, paint this portrait in uh, one sitting, uh, in uh, uh, alla prima, as we call it, where... Uh, I will um, where I will uh, finish paint this portrait uh, in just a few hours. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some best practices that professional painters uh, uh, have when they paint their uh, their uh, paintings, uh, their uh, portraits uh, as well. And uh, the first thing is that uh, a student, uh, a beginner in uh, uh, painting or somebody who wants to improve his painting uh, or her painting skills is to understand the the wheel of color the the scale of uh, colors and uh, uh, how it differs how this is different from the tonal uh, scale you have to know that uh, um, the tonal scale is of course very important and uh, tones are those who um, give us uh, which area in one painting is the most bright, the lighter, and uh, which areas are in uh, shadow. So it's uh, uh, very good to understand the scale, to be able to discern uh, uh, where our uh, brightest lights uh, are and uh, where are our shadowiest uh, shadows, darkest uh, shadows, and uh, being able to transfer those on our uh, uh, paintings. Mm, as uh, we say, the, the tones do all the work uh, when we paint a portrait, and but color gets uh, the whole credit. This is why when I'm painting a portrait, uh, I don't very much worry about uh, 
uh, the colors that I use the, to get the very identical color that I see on my reference photo or uh, what I see if I paint from life but uh, I'm more preoccupied on uh, create painting correctly the, the tonal scale let's say um, arranging my shapes my uh, tones correctly and uh, uh, trying to uh, to be to use this scale in a in a way that makes uh, sense. If I paint everything uh, in a very bright uh, mode, then I will have uh, no place, no space to add my highlights. So make sure because we all tend to paint brighter than uh, uh, than we should. Make sure to make good use of your uh, darker mid and uh, medium and uh, dark tones and make sure those are dark enough that will allow you to paint uh, the highlights uh, as best uh, um, as uh, you can. Now, as I said, of course, it's very important to understand the theory of uh, the, the color and the tonal uh, scale. It's very important, but uh, also it's uh, very important to practice uh, all this theory in your studio be in the studio and uh, um, work with uh, this uh, theory that uh, it's easy to find, we all have, work with this theory and uh, experiment with, uh, mm, with applying this uh, material, uh, this theory ourselves and with uh, learning the materials that we use uh, we, without fear, without uh, any hesitation. Many students or beginner painters have an extreme fear of the materials. So they believe they have to have the perfect, let's say, recipe for uh, oil painting uh, for uh, their uh, acrylic uh, uh, materials, if they use acrylics. Anyhow, um, the, the technique is one aspect of painting, but uh, the technique shouldn't be an obstacle. Uh, the technical uh, aspect, let's say, of painting, we should be bold enough and, uh, um, let's say, even stress the, the limits of uh, these materials, if uh, it's possible, in general, to not be in fear of uh, um, the technical aspects, just be in the studio and, uh, and uh, paint. So yes, be bold, be um, experimental, uh, be uh, let's say attack the <laughs> attack the portrait that uh, or the painting that you are doing without uh, any fear. Fear and doubt uh, can be a very bad influence on our uh, paintings. Now, one other thing that is extremely important for um, for us painters is uh, that. Uh, uh, often I see many students that uh, paint and uh, no matter how talented or how, no matter how much they practice, they, they don't ac achieve um, a very convincing, very nice result just because they don't really know where to, where to go while they're painting, where to end and uh, what uh, best, uh, what nice painting uh, looks like. It's very important to have in our uh, minds some intellectual uh, images of uh, what good painting uh, means, uh, what is, let's say, in this case, a good portrait, um, what are the virtues that a good uh, portrait uh, uh, is comprised uh, from. And uh, for this, it's very important, in my opinion, it's extremely important to pay visits in museums, to really spend a lot of time in museums, especially for those of you who are younger in age, this is extremely important. But uh, for anybody, anybody that uh, wants to really have some quality uh, of in their work, we have to visit museums and really observe these uh, amazing masterpieces and masterpieces and see how great painting uh, really 
looks like. If we live far away from those great museums or we can't travel, there are so many online sites that we can visit and see these masterpieces in detail. Of course, it's not the the same thing, but uh, it definitely helps and it definitely will uh, enrich our visual uh, memory, our visual libra library of uh, how brush strokes look like, etc. This is this also leads me to um, my other uh, advice on this area, where it's so nice. Uh, to to study the the, the old masters to do copies and uh, uh, studies on their work uh, this is just uh, to help us uh, not copy um, not just copy their style but uh, more to really get familiarized uh, with uh, great uh, artworks with uh, great uh, work uh, and try to achieve this level of uh, mastery and professionalism so um, do these studies i much of my videos here are studies of uh, old uh, masterpieces as best uh, as i can uh, as i often say these studies are uh, more to for me to practice and for me to understand this great how great painting looks like so that I, I can apply my knowledge on my more personal work later on and um, one more thing that uh, I want to say as a, a good practice if you want to improve your uh, painting is that uh, we can't really improve and become better painters if we don't uh, practice our drawing skills. Painting and drawing um, go hand by hand. Um, of course, I'm talking about this uh, figurative uh, painting. Uh, uh, draw painting is uh, a big spectrum where uh, there are so many different uh, ways to paint something. But uh, for those of us who are interested in painting uh, realistically, naturalistically, it's uh, very important to also practice our uh, um, drawing uh, skills from uh, life. It's um, drawing will help us and save us so much time because uh, uh, drawing is an art of uh, seeing and um, like painting uh, is uh, and uh, synchronizing uh, our uh, brain our eyes and our uh, hands uh, drawing will uh, help us uh, understand uh, what we see and uh, uh, what best painters do is um, they have their subject and they uh, they are able to decode what they see and uh, into shapes, into lines, into tones uh, directly. They don't just uh, um, analyze what they see if uh, it is a, a portrait, a face into eyes, nose and mouth, etc. But they, um, they analyze what they see into uh, shapes, tones, colors, uh, etc. So um, learning how to draw will uh, help you so much and uh, really don't uh, skip this uh, process it can be very very enjoyable and uh, just a simple uh, piece of paper and uh, uh, a pencil can be our uh, best friend and can be uh, such a valuable uh, tool for uh, us uh, um, painters who want to improve uh, our uh, um, our skills Welcome on how to paint a realistic portrait like the old masters course. This course will teach you how to paint a portrait that is of high standards as those painted by the early Renaissance artists. My name is Antonis Kosmadakis and I'm an iconographer and a painter. I have been studying Byzantine, Medieval and Renaissance art since 1992 with degrees on painting from the Athens School of Fine Arts and the San Francisco State University. This course shows the technique of painting a face step by step in the traditional way of the artists of the early Renaissance 
using specifically two works by the great Botticelli as our reference. By the end of the course, not only you will be able to understand the principles of using egg tempera as a medium to paint a portrait, but you will also be able to apply these various techniques on other mediums like acrylics and gouache. More than that, you will be given tips on drawing, colors, the pigments and the brushes. If you want to improve your painting skills and use traditional techniques and concepts to enrich your artwork, this is a great course for you. All you need is passion for painting and a willingness to practice on this exciting way of painting like the old masters. So come join me into this course and see how vastly this can inform your artistic vision. Thank you so much, stay creative! And uh, one more thing I want to say here as uh, best uh, advice is uh, that um, it's uh, very important, as I said before, to be in the studio to practice uh, without fear, but uh, also with a sense of uh, um, with uh, the question of improving ourselves, with uh, the question of uh, learning more and becoming uh, more and uh, more um, the best painters uh, we can, and um, it's important to to be able to to take pleasure from uh, our work, uh, no matter what the result uh, is, and um, to really own uh, our uh, work. Sometimes uh, not uh, all painters are as, uh, let's say, skillful in uh, realistic representation of uh, life, but uh, their work can be extremely interesting. We have uh, innumerable examples from uh, the history of art where uh, the, the paintings uh, of uh, many painters don't look uh, realistic, uh, let's say, or they don't look uh, correctly, let's say, but uh, they have um, a great uh, value, a great... Uh, they have... Um, they are amazing uh, paintings. So I often uh, encounter students whose work uh, is not as, uh, let's say, skillful in rendering reality, but uh, it is very charming, it is very, very sincere, it has some uh, uh, beautiful uh, virtues uh, in it. And uh, the only thing that is uh, left there for them is to own this work, to really feel great about this work, even if it doesn't look, uh, let's say, realistically. And uh, after owning the work, uh, to see, to understand um, uh, where, on which uh, area of the painting spectrum they belong, to understand, to own it, and uh, to improve themselves on that uh, aspect. So um, this, uh, in my opinion, is uh, very, very important. And it will save so much uh, time and uh, effort and uh, tears from many people to just understand uh, where, uh, on which, uh, let's say, color of the spectrum of painting they, they belong uh, at. I hope all this uh, does make sense to you and uh, I hope these uh, advices are um, of some help to you and uh, they, um, they ring uh, a chord into you. Um, if I would say, if I would keep one advice is to just uh, be in the studio and um, try to boldly uh, paint and express yourself and enjoy the, the process of painting, the, uh, the use of the tools and the materials and try to uh, take pleasure from uh, your work as best as you can. Uh, of course, as I, as I said before, in the spirit of always improving ourselves, knowing that there's always more space for uh, becoming better, and um, to be proud and happy about uh, the, uh, the works of uh, our uh, hands. So this uh, portrait here uh, comes to its uh, completion, the flesh part of it comes to a completion. Uh, little by little, just um, speaking of the tonal uh, and color scale, let me just say that uh, 
Here I haven't used any black color at all, just because black color would add some grayishness to it that I, I wasn't interested in using here. So by understanding the color wheel and the, the color scale, you'll be able to create these more vibrant, vivid colors. I want to thank uh, you all so much, especially my support, uh, supporters on uh, Patreon.com. They really um, help uh, with the production of these videos, so thank you so much. Um, if you like, you can visit my page there where you can find some exclusive uh, content and tutorials uh, as well. And um, really thank you all for subscribing, for your beautiful comments and for liking my videos. I will see you soon with another video. Until then, stay healthy, stay creative and uh, keep uh, painting uh, as best as you can. Bye.